So let's talk about um, hyperstudy. Hyperstudy uh, really can be a powerful tool in terms of automating tasks. So specifically, if you've never used hyperstudy, hyperstudy is a multidisciplinary a design software. What that means is it can take inputs from various sources. Um, you kind of see in the image right there, we can take pretty much from every single Altair solver, you know, structural, but also electromagnetic, you know, FICO, Flux, Flux Motor, um, and then also OptiStruct and Radios. But the other really cool thing about this tool is it can actually utilize spreadsheets or parameterized scripts. You know, maybe they're not ext Altair files. And also we interface with, with some external solvers as well, like ANSYS and a few others. But one of the cool things about it is it allows um, engineers, you know, most of you probably are making you know, design decisions on your designs. And um, we'll talk about it in the next slide, but there's a lot of decisions you guys have to make and going through every single decision can be very kind of time consuming with kind of a, a serial based approach of going through simulation. With hyperstudy, you can kind of go through and, and automate all these tasks. The other really cool thing is hyperstudy has capabilities of uh, utilizing um, kind of advanced analytics. There's a lot of data processing capabilities within it that give you the capability to kind of zone in on a lot of studies. So let's kind of take a look at an example. So this is an example. This is just a typical robot arm. And this is just to kind of get you guys thinking about, you know, where would you use a design exploration software? Where would you use hyperstudy? So if you look at this, there's so many different things that come into play. I mean, if you look at the dimensions, this is a somewhat complicated CAD part. There's numerous dimensions and changes, and all these are kind of controllable based off of manufacturing you know, requirements. You know, how this part's gonna be manufactured, there's certain tolerances as probably all of you are aware of. The next thing is there's certain materials. You know, you're dealing with a certain distributor, or you're manufacturing, you kind of know the materials you wanna utilize. Um, and then lastly, there's some other parameters, you know, specifically, you know, uh, maybe this part is being designed um, under certain temperature conditions or there's certain surface finishes. There's so many different variables you can kind of input. Um, when you kind of look at design, sometimes it can be an infinite, uh, you know, infinite parameters of, of what's happening. Um, kind of that, that old term, uh, you know, paralysis or design by paralysis, you know, you're not kind of working, you, you can kind of get, uh, Overconsumed. So, where hyperstudy can kind of come into play is it can actually simulate a variety of scenarios. You know, generally we all have certain objectives and controls over our designs. Um, all of you probably know what your limits are and your tolerances are, but it can be very time-consuming to go through that. So, so hyperstudy can actually put all of those variables and permutations into one GUI. And then what it can do is it can then actually solve that scenario. Like I said, we're gonna look at an example that's based around structural, but I wanna keep in mind, if you're dealing with a lot of Excel data or you know, just script data, you can use hyperstudy as well. So you're not limited by using you know, some type of analysis simulation. We can also look at scripts or Excel data. And really it's great for kind of making design decisions for a large amount of scenarios or variables you have. So after you run the scenario, what hyperstudy will do is it will point out to you, you know, what the actual um, results are based on the responses you specified. So kind of a classic example is I kind of might change my dimensional variables and I wanna see what the max stress, and the max displacement is gonna be on the system. Hyperstudy will deliver that and then it gives you the capability of using its uh, data analytics to kind of prove out which is the key contributing factor. So um, how hyperstudy works is it, it kind of has um, five different study approaches built into it. The cool thing about this is all these, some of these are statistical based approaches and others are kind of more automated design based approaches. So DOE and basic, what it's doing, it's using a, a upper and lower bounds and then sweeping your results through scenarios within the GUI. So if you have like a dimensional variable, you know, of an upper tolerance and a lower tolerance, you can put deed that into hyperstudy and then it can actually do that. And you don't actually have to go and change that uh, kind of geometry. It's gonna do that automatically, uh, you know, via the parameterized uh, dimensions you've specified in, in your uh, preprocessor, which most simulation tools have that, OptiStruct and Radios have it. 
And then some of the others like fit and stochastic, what they'll do is they'll utilize some of the approaches you have, you know, some of the models you'll run in hyperstudy and then use statistical analysis to kind of extrapolate further out um, where it kind of goes through a probability distribution. Based on what it's seeing, it can kind of tell you what's going to happen later. So you can actually do some really nice advanced analytics as well within the system. All right, so let's kind of take a look at an example here. So I have hyperstudy open here. Yep, here we go. So pretty nice uh, system. We'll kind of step through this. Obviously, uh, the the model I have prepared, it's I ran a couple different cases. Um, didn't take too long to run, uh, but for the sake of a webinar, I'm not going to run the exact scenario. But I'm going to kind of start through, go through the setup, so you can kind of see how it links with different tools. So if I go to new study here, if I specify where I want to save it, I'm going to put it into the you know. Uh, just a sample folder here. Okay. Yep, that's fine. And then <clears throat> what I can do is I can hit add model. Um, and right here, you'll see all the different values I was kind of talking about. So like I said, uh, hyperstudy works really well with all of our solvers. You'll see pretty much everything within our suite is here. Uh, but we also have some external capabilities here. Uh, you know, kind of a, can I see workbench there and some external processors and then also these parameterized files, internal math and spreadsheet. Um, like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be simulation data. It could be large spreadsheet data you're trying to control and look at. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. In this case, we're going to look at a hypermesh file. So I'm going to hit OK. So for, from here, we can specify uh, uh, you know, what solver script I want to utilize. In this case, it's uh, an OptiStruct file from hypermesh. And then I can specify, you know, what file I want to bring in. So let me grab the file. All right. And then what I do, I'll just show kind of the starting process of this is I've hit import variables. What it will do, it will automatically load Hyperworks. And then what it will do is actually load that model automatically for you. And how it works within Hyperworks is you just specify a variable. It's a parameterized variable. So in this case, it could be a dimensional variable. It could be, you'll see there's some uh, material variables. Um, and it could also be force variables. So in this case, I could specify all of my different um, kind of shape variables here. And all these pertain to uh, just different um, values. I'm not going to hit OK here just because, like I said, it takes a few minutes for it to link all those variables. But again, it's a very nice streamlined process. So I'm going to hit Cancel. Um, that's fine. I, I'm going to go to my preloaded file so we can take a look at it. So what you'll see, what it brings in is it brings in these um, specific, you know, all these specific variables. And we specify you know, our lower and upper bounds. This is what you have control over. In this case, it's negative 1 to 1. Uh, but you can kind of control what you want. And then what it does is you can test these models. Um, it's going to kind of show you what your model data is going to be. And then from there, I can actually run a DOE. And you'll see, in this case, there's like 61 different scenarios. It does this all within the tool. It delivers all the results and all the responses directly within the GUI. Um, so if you're trying to do a lot of different kind of scenarios, as you know, it can, can, can become very tedious trying to do that in just HyperMesh or you know whatever SIM tool you're working with. Uh, in this case, it, it kind of puts everything into the same environment, and then I can post-process very quickly. So when I look at post-processing here, there's a lot of capabilities, but I tend to like looking at a Pareto plot because uh, it can kind of show me really quickly what you know all my responses, in this case, uh, displacement and stress and volume. But one of the cool things is if you've ever used Hyperview, it kind of, we have an integration here where you can kind of set multiple different types of plots. So I'm actually going to create four different Pareto plots. And you'll see that everything's kind of pretty nice from the GUI. I can easily click on this. This is going to be max displacement. I can click here, select max stress. I can select maybe, maybe I want to go max stress three here. You'll see how it changes and then our volume. So the individual max stresses are localized max stress variables based on faces. Um, max stress is the global max stress and max displacement is the global max displacement. So in this case, we kind of see uh, using this length two and a half variable, it kind of contributes to the largest stress and displacement. So I would probably say, you know, I would probably want to avoid this length um, for our system. Um, 
and, and probably go to maybe one of these other kind of dimensions here. Um, we can see also from the summary, I have all those values, but there's also uh, kind of see a, a distribution graph here. You can then start take, taking advantage of st uh, stochastics and maybe have a bunch of other cases where you're not necessarily running the FE study, but maybe just utilizing um, interpolation and running a lot of different studies, which is nice. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of kind of power here under the hood. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah.